Uh, uh, de Nederlandse versie was uh, bijna uh, 40 mensen. Um, welcome everybody. Yeah. Uh, I'm happy that you're here. And now I would uh, ask you to come at the front row, everybody. We, we don't want to have a one-way presentation. We want to have, as we said uh, in Dutch, a huiskamergesprek, a living room conversation. Um, we do this presentation in English because some people are not that fluent in Dutch. Um, we're interested, where are you from? Are you from Holland? Are you from somewhere else? I'm from Germany. From Germany? I worked a couple of years in The Hague. Okay. And then I worked in Luxembourg oh. for 10 years and now I'm in Germany. Good to see you. Welcome. Uh, I'm from Belgium, so it's actually really a problem. <laughs> and I switched across the okay. storm, so well. that's why. Welcome. Uh, I work as a flight safety engineer uh, at uh, different companies. At the? At different companies. Okay, at different companies. Okay. Thank you. And you? I'm living in Germany at the moment, but I'm originally from Germany. Welcome. <laughs> the Dutch. <laughs> and also from the Netherlands. You're also. And also from the Netherlands. Well, welcome. Um, as I said, we want to make it a conversation. We know we've been working in high rise for several for some time, but we are amongst professionals was our estimation, and that's why we want to uh, involve you as much as possible. Sitorabi, ja Vinia. Um, we want to take you through some things: the relevance of fire safety in high rise. Um, we want to introduce ourselves a little. Why we give this introduction? and also what our experiences are, what we see. And then, uh, parallel to that, we want to meet you. We want to hear from you what your experiences are, what your views are. But before we go in there, I'd like to uh, introduce you a little bit of uh, history of high rise and in Rotterdam, because I'm working in Rotterdam. Rotterdam has been the traditional a city with a high rise building in 80, 97, the work was uh, started as the highest skyscraper in Europe at the old uh, Our Hafen. There was an 11 story office building, 43 meters, 141 feet. Uh, later on, uh, in Belgium, was the highest when they were finished, but at that time, when they started, it was a, uh, the highest building in Europe and uh, known as uh, White House. Especially in the year after the World War II. Uh, men started to uh, become uh, 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 more important aspect of the uh, fire safety uh, on the high rise building. Uh, when the mass store fled, this is by the way the old mass store, and the new mass store is somewhere behind this, uh, uh, was completed in 1956. The 11 story building was the tallest residential uh, high rise in Netherlands. But as you see, the funny thing is that, oh, we can also do it like this. The funny thing is the high-rise building in 1956, right now is it lower than a uh, cruise ship, but uh, the times change. Uh, the GEB tower was only 58 meters tall, but in World War II, Germans built a six extra rooftop on it, and it become suddenly the 64 meters uh, the tallest building until until 1963. On the newspaper in uh, 1956, this was on the newspaper, and it says the giant office building in the Schiedamse Dijk, uh, Leuvenflat. It was uh, 53 meters, and as you see right now, it's almost. Uh, you don't see it. But in 1978, next thing has happened. No one cares.
After this fire in 1978, uh, new regulation was uh, started in, uh, in Netherlands. This was also a reason behind the setting up Fire Prevention Commission, BBC, in Rotterdam. Yeah, um, I'm Javinia. I work at Peutz Consultants and I'm involved in fire safety for high rise buildings since uh, the late 90s. Um, I have been involved in developing concepts, uh, not just according to regulations, but also to look at risks or um, requirements we would like to have. Um, I've been, been involved in the uh, Dutch Handreiking Brandveiligheid in Hoogbouw, a guideline for uh, fire safety in high rise buildings. But apart from high rise buildings, the fire safety in high rise buildings just doesn't just require a certain set of um, solutions, but it requires a, s uh, a way of thinking. And we think that way of thinking is also applicable in large atria or in underground train uh, tunnels, underground tube systems, but obviously also in high-rise buildings, even where this, uh, we had this morning a presentation about fa fire safety of facades. This is a high-rise building with this is the facade of the building itself, and there's a screen in front of it again. So that's very specific also. All those things require attention to what can happen. Eh? A speed skating rink, um, uh, the Markthal also in Rotterdam with a large internal space, um, a renovation of a building of 100 years old um, where the concrete floors were a bit of an unknown quantity because the, con the structural engineer said, well, I don't know exactly what the concrete floors can do. So we had to take that into account in developing the fire safety concept for this building. And this is the Lo Royal Albert Hall again. Specifically, we didn't do the fire safety there, but it required a very specific out-of-the-box way of thinking. And also for high rise, that's what we need. Okay. <coughs> this is me. Uh, I'm going to I'm a senior uh, uh, fire safety advisor in Rotterdam. And I'm also a member of Fire Prevention Commission in Rotterdam. I'd like to uh, say something about the Fire Prevention Commission in Rotterdam, uh, very fast, of course. Oh, by the way, this is me, but in my head, uh, I <laughs> look like uh, something like this. Uh, but normally, you see me like this. <laughs> uh, Fire Prevention Commission is uh, known in uh, Rotterdam <coughs> as the BBC. This is actually a committee appointed by the mayor of uh, Rotterdam. We have the on a, on a commission. We have the power of to decide of the fire safety in the building the object uh, in Rotterdam, and each building object must be approved by at least two people member. One member is the advisor of municipality of Rotterdam, and the other one is at, uh, uh, the member of the fire department of Rotterdam. This is very unique uh, committee and a commission. Uh, in uh, a bit I think this is only per per fire prevention committee uh, in uh, Holland. And the primary goal is a testing of the fire safety, of course, and then, uh, and and we advising the department of the building permit, as known as Bau and Warning to sich, they give the permit uh, building, and we also uh, uh, advising the building supervising and the Rotterdam and in, in events in Rotterdam, there are lots, and the secondary goals of us. Uh, Brand Prevention Commission is that we are thinking with the architect uh, about the clever solution. And we are cooperating also with uh, with uh, advisor and uh, officers and the fire safety engineers uh, to approach uh, and, and fire safety uh, uh, solution uh, uh, on risk approach. And we also uh, participated in national standard uh, like high rise, uh, underground, metro. We're doing also with uh, with boats uh, uh, and uh, almost uh, I think 15 years we are uh, with. The project is going on, going and going. Uh, we do also uh, electric vehicles, norms, and uh, <coughs> and lots of uh, uh, mega industrial building. The last one was something like 200,000 uh, cubic uh, oh no, uh, square meter. And given those secondary roles of the Fire Prevention Committee, um, we, th we uh, s uh, put forward the that every city with high-rise, or maybe every city with complex projects, but 
we are discussing high rise now, every city with high rise should have something like a fire prevention committee. Um, what are your feelings about that? Uh, I see you nodding. What, what, what do you think about it? And Repression in the repression. repression. Yeah. Uh, so um, I think it's important uh, that there is initially, initially a committee to, uh, hmm? um, to make. Now, uh, I, I, uh, I think that if you have the knowledge of firefighting, you can bring it to, uh, hmm. yeah. to the city. Yeah, the fire prevention committee can introduce the yeah. because there are members of the fire department in it as well. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think some of the, uh, <coughs> the rules lack actual expertise of the working in the field. Mm. Okay. And <coughs> in one of the slides earlier it said you have to approve a building. Yeah. Uh, but the outline is still the, the, the bulbous light, right? The Dutch building. Code. Yeah. You, you can't yeah. approve we based on anything on top yeah. of the bulbous uh, light. You cannot, but if the building gets higher than 70 meters. Yeah. The, the Dutch building decree doesn't uh, prescribe provisions. Yeah. So then you have to support your, uh, your design. Mm -hmm. That you say the, the level of safety is the same level of safety as required by the decree. And that, mm, yeah. It's actually when a plan doesn't match the standard regulation, then yeah. the advisor must find an uh, equivalent solution. Yeah. And uh, those, uh, what, what is equivalent, yeah. that is something to be discussed. And, and, and that goes in both ways. That means you also can um, exp not explain, uh, propose something to someone, or is it more that you approve what they present you? Because well normally they, they show the simulation, yeah. and the simulation always tells you it will work out this yeah. way. Yeah. Or you say, <coughs> or something. It always says it's, it, it at the end it says it works, because with the simulation you start. Yeah. The if it doesn't work, you try we different are, uh, solutions. Actually, the uh, I can say that we are not passive. Mm -hmm. uh, like uh, uh, Mark uh, knows, it's uh, we're going to see it, uh, one of the new high-rise building. Already from beginning, we are uh, part of actually uh, the process. Even uh, uh, you know as a, as a metro, because uh, the, the metro station, the old metro station has to be... Uh, 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 Refurbished. Uh, refurbished and and, uh, and we are not just sitting there and uh, and then someone from office comes and says uh, this is the solution what do you think it it is not like that but for the small things of course we cannot be all of the but for the for the let's say the the the, the huge building or the special building we are part of process yeah. we are thinking together it's not like because I am telling you, or you are, uh, or someone says, this is what I have, and say yes or no. It doesn't mm. work like that. At least, no. I like to think yeah. it's not like that. Well, <laughs> as a consultant, <laughs> as a consultant, I can say, when we have a complex project in Rotterdam, then at very early stages, we start a conversation with the fire safety committee, and um, Rotterdam has also in place a system that they make minutes of those conversations. <laughs> And those minutes are basically part of why the solutions are accepted eventually. So it's it's a it's a dialogue. Yeah. It's definitely a dialogue. And it's also uh, exchanging ideas. It's mm -hmm. it's uh, yeah. it's not yeah. We we exchange the ideas. Of course, there are some moments that that we are disagree with each other, but uh, but in the end, I think every time that y if you if you don't look at on on the on, a, on, a, on, a, on a, the small details that we are disagree with each other, but you look at in the end of product, I think that we yeah. have a good uh, cooperating with yeah. each other. It's not like that you come with a plan and say, how can we solve it? Mm -hmm. And that the shit says, well, we do it like this and this and this. That's not the case. You come as a concept and then you get the discussion. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's a, a two-way discussion. Yeah. 
and we use also uh, uh, each other experience. Uh, yeah. That's uh yeah. No, but uh, I don't know how this work. I don't know how this yeah. work. Uh, no, the no. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if it's a tunnel, if it's a high-rise building, if it's a hospital, yeah, everyone understands that buildings are so complex mm-hmm. these days, but there is no political view on it to say we need fire engineers to look at this. Mm. We need architects, we need yeah, someone to look at the load-bearing structure, that's all regulated, but fire engineering, yeah, yeah okay. But if I uh, interpret... In Belgium, you have to commit, right, on a country level. To go, if you need Everybody. Anyone ah, yeah. yeah. going to the committee, yeah. it's a fact. They but say they will approve it, right. but there is no clarification of who will take care of this innovation, who will take care of what you are asking and what are you doing. And this committee can't look at every detail and make no. sure that everything will be okay. So why isn't there a requirement of who is looking at this? Mm. So basically you say there should be a fire prevention committee in every larger city, but it should be also nationally linked. So the, the and the same, I'm sorry, the same for the fire control, yeah? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. The people who are uh, looking at it and giving you an approval also needs to be qualified for yeah. this. So it's the same, same yeah. high level of... Uh, yeah, so <coughs> <coughs> and what we see is sometimes, you discussed Amsterdam, <laughs> well, there is the fire brigade is involved in projects, mm-hmm. but it can be that there is uh, one person involved in a project with uh, who's apprehensive for that kind of project, and it, it's always difficult. That I agree, and that's why uh, uh, we discussed the fire prevention committee, where they have one member of the city of the municipality so and one member of the fire brigade, and they too uh, have to agree on when they approve or why they don't approve. Yeah. And then, and then this sometimes even uh, this person doesn't agree with this person, and that means that. We go and then the, there are other two members yeah. and we go with four people and we see what is going on. And then somewhere, you know, that with the fire engineering, it's like if you discuss very small uh, details, probably we have 10 different idea here. So uh, so it's not about the idea, but it's it's in the end is uh, uh, to 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 approve and uh, to be uh, cooperated that in that end that uh, that the permit can uh, be uh, done on, on should, yeah. whatever the building it is and uh, and as I said uh, if if we uh, even with the high rise uh, I think we are with three or four people sometimes we change and then we know if s- in some details when we are agree with each other, with six people, with all the experience, then you know that is definitely, uh, definitely good. Then you know that. But if sometimes you have six different idea with six different people, that means that we have to discuss on that point, on the yeah. ma- uh, details. And is it clear how you do this? How you what what kind of yeah, therapy you do? Is that something? Yeah. <laughs> Discuss before you know what to expect, what things are will be checked. Is that something you do uh, 
Ja, dat is... Uh, Jawel, we ja. Why do I ask that? Because if we go to, for the application, we go to the federal uh, department, they look at what we do, but we don't really have, like, how do I look at this? Is there, what parameters do they look at? It's not okay. really all that clear. Mm. It is clearer in the Netherlands, I think, because we have the guideline for buildings up to 200 meters, mm -hmm. and basically uh, it doesn't set the guidelines about what to do, but also what goals to achieve and why to achieve those goals. So we, ha we have a starting point for the discussion always. Yeah. And Rotterdam is now in, uh, working on a document for buildings from 200 meters upwards. Do you have parameters for tenancy design yeah. 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 beforehand? Yeah, we have it beforehand, so we know as designers what, uh, what we have so to look at. You had a yeah, what's uh, the qualification of these committee members? Are they all engineers? Or um, uh, we are all uh, actually. Uh, I am I am a bachelor engineer in uh, in uh, in the building. I am an architect. I study in the United States, and then later on I changed my study to the fire engineering. So uh, I can even yeah. I don't design anymore. My <laughs> even if I I am qualified for design also, yeah. but I don't. I changed yeah. my career to fire engineering, <laughs> and then uh, it's like uh, you started in the beginning, and then later on you grow, and then you go to uh, study, and you grow, you grow. A lot of experience. Yeah. You use also a lot of experience. That's mm -hmm. that is yeah. very. Uh, I have to say also uh, because before we have to go on the bus. Yeah. It's uh, for me. It's uh, uh, when I am in Rotterdam. Uh, we have like uh, 30, 40 uh, high-rise building. And uh, today I'm working with Mark and uh, and Yop. Tomorrow I'm working with David. And then uh, the day after, uh, the day after, maybe a year later, is the other building. And you learn every day lots of things from uh, each other. When uh, when is something happen in Rotterdam and it doesn't work, and we come later on, then we change the idea with uh, with with other people. It uh, says you know the regulation says this, but it doesn't work. It it it. Someone uh, uh, make that regulation, but when it doesn't work, then we exchange the idea because the regulation are always regulation. There's mm. always something yep. that is not. You will come back to that later. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and uh, and we use also. I'm um, gonna skip this one because uh, on on the fire safety uh, for the solutions. Uh um, what we saw in the video about the fire in the Leuvenhaven building were the nice external stairs. And they have some advantages because they're smoke-free, relatively smoke-free. Um, and you know, because you can see where the smoke exits the building, you know if you are below the fire level. So you get information from that situation. <coughs> and what we saw was the fire brigade was, the, was uh, finalizing their deployment so that we could, they could enter the building if they had anything to enter the building with and to uh, do repression there. Um, when we have internal stairwells, some things of the external stair we want to keep. Uh, relatively smoke-free, maybe information on what level you are and where the fire is, uh, but we don't want to have the negative aspects of the external stairwells. If it rains, you get wet, uh, it might get slippery. Uh, if it's windy, then the fire brigade may not be able to uh, finalize the deployment. But we want to have it smoke-free. Um, we want we do not want the fire to uh, influence the, uh, the climate in the stairwells. We want to have a continued safety, not just for evacuation, but also for uh, fire safety deployment, or maybe not. Um, and we have some provisions to realize those things in general. And for high rise, we may look at it in a different way, but we use lobbies, we use pressurization in those lobbies or in the stairwells. And we have, obviously, fire-rated partitions around the stairwells. If we have stairwells, we have what we uh, called in our preparation a functional failure regarding the evacuation. Um, at a certain moment, if you have a high-rise building, some people get 
uh, more tired than other people, they slow down more than other people, and then you get a kind of obstruction on your stairwell. So the density increases around those people. With increased density, the risk of uh, nudging each other or falling increases. So you introduce even more blockage. Um, will it get... Um, is, the, is the air fresh enough? Or do, get, do I get... Uh, after do I lose my breath walking down there? Does it get hot with a lot of people there? Um, if it's really high, does not everybody get fatigue? And obviously, in the current deployment situation, the fire brigade wants to use the stairwells at a certain moment. And if I have a high-rise building, the fire brigade might be there before everyone is evac evacuated. In uh in Netherlands, we consider the building a uh, uh, high-rise when its uh, highest floor is above uh, 70 meters. These are a couple of uh, examples of uh, high-rise building in Rotterdam. And uh, at this moment, there are more than 30 high-rise buildings in Rotterdam. And uh, in the next few years, uh, maybe 10 or 15 new high-rise buildings be, uh, will be built. Uh, this is, uh, by the way, uh, just a design. Uh, this is a uh, post 150, Sacks Rotterdam. They is not yet built it, but the other one is started already. And how do we like it or not? Race has already started in uh, in Netherlands. Mm -hmm. And uh, until uh, 2021, the highest residential tower was New Orleans. It was uh, 160 meters. Last year, the highest residential tower in Netherlands and Benelux become the Zollenhafen. This is 250 meters. By the way, I have to say it, this 250 meters inclusive this part, but the highest floor is the, uh, just a uh, little bit less than 200 because, and the new residential tower is already on design and uh, Poets and Mark and uh, everybody else working on it. It's, be, uh, it's uh, become between 250 and 300 meters. Mm -hmm. It's a coincidence or not, but all three buildings is uh, engineered by uh, boats. And, uh, and as I said, the race has already started. Mm -hmm. and but what, what, uh, this, uh, just this morning, as Sir Lieben said, the future starts today. But given the fact that we are currently designing, well, maybe almost 300 meters tall building, um, we discussed, well, maybe the future started yesterday or even before that. So we really have to take Think steps to get on the bandwagon. The fire safety of high-rise building guideline going to 200 meters. The construction of Salmhaven, as I told you, is a little bit higher than 250, but the floor is lower than 200. But this project let us, the Brand Preferency Committee Rotterdam, also boats because uh, all three of us uh, designed, to new insight, to new various of fire prevention as aspect, we have to look things differently. For example, this is ju just for Rotterdam. Yeah, I ask a question from the sheet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and credit to our foreign uh, uh, colleagues. Uh, uh, in the Netherlands, we have regulations uh, that go to 20 meters, then to 70 meters heavier, and then from 70 up to 100, a little bit more heavier. How is it in Germany? I was, just, I was just about to bring this question, yeah. because if you say a high-rise starts at 70 meters, yeah. Yeah. in Germany a high-rise starts at 22 meter. Yeah. And 22 meter with uh, another additional meter until you the window uh, starts, that's 23 meters. Hmm. And 23 meters by a given standard of 12 meters, <coughs> it's exactly why the standard outer ladder in Germany is just 30 meters, it's yeah. called ladder uh, 23, yeah. 12. That means you have to reach a point there with a distance of 12 meters. Yeah. Every, every building where the floor level is above 22 meter, you have to have a second mean of escape as part of the building. Yeah. In any other building, the second mean of escape is well the, the ladder from the Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then take it from 23 up to the sky is the limit, the sky is the limit or is it, do you have a limit the somewhere? It's still, it's still a little bit under discussion and it all comes down to what we call the Bundesländer because mm. they have, the, <laughs> they have, they have yeah. to say there's something like a, um, a general master um, guideline for the buildings, but every 
the, of the of the Bundesländer are free to apply or not to apply, or use the general building code and say a high rise is a is a, a special purpose building and yeah. it's it might well be engineered. But not normally, it's there's some engineer design. Even so, we don't have that much of a high rise building yeah. in, in some parts in Germany. Yeah. There is a lot, like in, in Frankfurt, for example. Um, if this answers the question. Yeah. 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 Definitely, yeah. definitely. I think yeah. this is interesting. Um, just over ten years ago uh, now, um, I was a speaker on a on a international masterclass for high rise, and there was one speaker from a, a building, a consultant from a building in Frankfurt. Um, and and he, what he did, what he explained, and what was partly also different from our way to approach it, but it, he discussed provisions that he had to have there and without a risk evaluation there was well uh, the maybe the the bundesland where frankfurt is in had had regulations provisions in place they say well we just want to have these provisions if you take those measures then we accept the building um, there was also a swedish consultant uh, with a building uh, example where one exit uh, one stairwell was used, um, despite the fact it was a 90 meters tall building, but the requirements for the stairwell were extremely strict. And it was in three segments, and every segment you had to exit the stairwell, you had to take a hallway around the, the, the core of the building, and then you had to enter the next stairwell. And then we were all three flabbergasted when the British consultant came and they had a residential building with just one stairwell. Just without special provisions. In, in Germany, sometimes the, the ritual fit for the high rises is a pressurized stairway. Okay. And that they say it equals a second mean of escape. Mm. Meanwhile, we know better since Grand Yeah. And uh, if the building is, I think, above 60 meters, um, you must have both stairs pressurized. So okay. It, it really depends. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's permanently under discussion because, of course, also the German fire service and Fire safety engineers, they have brilliant ideas what to do. But there's also those who are planning the buildings or, or have to pay for the buildings. Mm -hmm. They also come with ideas. Yeah. And normally it's size down. I think we have a kind of not exact uh, discussion, but uh, from 70 meters, uh, you see, uh, you have to do a lot of things. And then uh, from 20 to 70, well, it's not like nothing, but you do almost nothing. And it's is a very uh, is different idea, of course, but uh, di different ideas. But somehow between 20 and 70 is a is a gap actually, and uh, suddenly from 70s uh, you get high rise, and then there are different. Uh but from what from what uh, level of building height you would ask for a second mean of escape in the ground? Oh. Mean a second stair, eight meters. Yeah. yeah. Firefighter lift, yeah. yeah. So from 70 meters. And a dry uh, exit. So to 8 meters, 1 mean of exit stairs. From 8 you have 2. From 20 meters you have some extra things. And from 70 you need to have spring stairs. But you know, that's a typical equation for the use really high rise buildings. We can't think about in a fairness. We will come to that. We definitely will come so to that. That's a bit of fairness also. And that's that's yeah, also that's, that's <coughs> perhaps another question, not fifty, seventy, ninety, at what what moment for your building and the amount of people inside and what strategy at certain point you have to introduce. Mm. And that's another way of just uh, I'm sixty nine, it's okay, I'm seventy now I'm doing something yeah. else. That's but unfortunately in earlier you need how many people you yeah. need more yeah. parameters to, to look at this. Yeah. But yeah. Um, well, I said unfortunately, but maybe some people say fortunately. But uh, unfortunately, in Holland, it's like uh, 
if you design a let's say residential building and you go to 69.99 no but it is <laughs> let let the yeah, air it is it's just uh, Maybe uh, I can uh, yeah. It's it's uh, the it's completely different uh, the uh, playground the and then when you go seventy it's suddenly uh, you Perhaps have it's fifty meters so the hospital is forty nine point yeah. five so it's not a high rise building yeah. okay but you you're looking yeah. at the hospital yeah <laughs> yeah yeah but that so if you look at uh, costs of uh, fire safety maybe not a popular subject so if you have a gym. You have a jump at 20 or 70, but this is really a big. This is not not in perspective, but this is really a big step. So if you go, let's say one uh, one meter above the 70 meters, the cost of fire safety provisions yeah they triple yeah yeah sorry they high rises yeah yeah they high rise as well yeah, as well, yeah. High rise, yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah of course uh, you you have building owners that say well. But that's why also, this is experience in Rotterdam, when you want to go from 70 higher, then most of the time you go down really higher. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah. because, because we don't have, have many buildings between 70 and 100 uh, meters no, tall. No, <laughs> there is no, uh, there, well, I cannot think about it actually. No. Uh, because it's, uh, you, when you build it, you want to build it as that you can rent or sell the you, the apartment. So you, you would like to, to have something uh, like that, but it's quite difficult to put in the code. Yeah. <laughs> but in uh, uh, in in uh, there are different uh, uh, scenarios uh, for evacuation, and in Rotterdam, is one of them is like uh, every time that uh, the alarm uh, goes on, that the whole building goes downstairs. Yes. For the so we don't we don't accept it anymore. Uh, even in Holland, they said you can build it in Amsterdam, and they accept it probably. But in Rotterdam, you cannot go with the scenario A. Uh, but the scenario we accepted is that the uh, 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 evacuation uh, must assume the building will be evacuated in an in in a phase, mm -hmm. and uh, because. Uh, this is also experience. A uh, couple of times there was a uh, high-rise building, and it was the first week uh, twice an alarm, and uh, everybody goes down so at two o'clock in the morning, and the day after, and the day after. But after a couple of days, uh, after this false alarm, uh, the well, if you live there and it's two o'clock in the morning and say, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go down, so and this is very dangerous. Mm -hmm. If the user don't trust your your uh, equipment in the building. That's the most dangerous things. Then uh, because then uh, yep. that's why you, we don't accept uh, that's uh, uh, anyhow. Yeah. Uh, but in 2019 uh, in Rotterdam we start because we knew that uh, the high rise building coming and we knew uh, we had only to 200 uh, meters. And we started actually in 2090 to think about the uh, new regulation, just for Rotterdam, of course, because it's not uh, national wide. And then uh, we use our experience. We use also a lot of literature. I even had a contact with uh, United Arab Emirates a uh, couple of times. Uh, and uh, I read uh, both uh, code practice, uh, believe me, there are a couple of thousand of pages. And uh, and we, we thought, uh, you know, they have the experience. so. Uh, Let's use their experience uh, to do something for ourselves. And, uh, and we did it. And after a while, uh, we share our uh, thoughts with, uh, with a group of uh, people in the offices. The, these are important offices. Uh, and as you know, that we did also with the poets. David, even yesterday, it, uh, I called you. Uh, uh, even sometimes I'll call you and say, what do you think about this? So there are, it's not like uh, just uh, government writing something and said, this is it, uh, you, you do it. Uh, mm -hmm. we, 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 we contact each other and uh, we're still uh, working on it. Uh, and, and there are, in the, in the vision, there are five important things. There's a fire control, sco a smoke control, scape, combat, uh, uh, fire brigade, and uh, continuity. But what 
very important thing is that extra point of attention is the quality uh, during the use and uh, and for example is that the uh, fire safety during the construction is very important sometimes uh, you, you forget uh, that you are building something uh, two three hundred meters but there are people who are working over there that if something happened they have to uh, it's, it's sometimes this this part uh, uh, people forget and what very important is so they skip uh, this one uh, becoming again uh, usage using uh, the building it's uh, also uh, as extra point uh. yeah um <coughs> here this is just a list of things we look at when we build high rise building when we design high rise buildings um this is just i come back to this picture later but we look at where do we put fire resistant walls even smoke resistant walls um, where do we use lobbies how do we make those lobbies um, I said something here pressurization is can be important um, a fire alarm system uh, a sprinkler installation uh, 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 well how do they a wet extinguishing line is a wet riser if there's a wet riser do we have water for the wet riser in the building itself or does the fire brigade have to provide it um, <coughs> a fire command room in the previous presentation Dutch presentation there was also the discussion that it could be a virtual command room uh, obviously a fire service elevator um, what evacuation concept do we look at and how can the firefighter service deploy themselves sorry I'm for disturbing again I no no problem no, it's missing something but if, if let, let's say it's a commercially used fire hmm. they have different companies and each company is responsible to have some safety measurement is there something in place to enforce that uh, the <coughs> emergency protocol is synchronized all throughout the building let's say it, it, it doesn't make really sense if the fifth floor is completely evacuating because the emergency yep. responders say we have to go out and the others they don't care or they do something different that's a hard thing in our uh, multi-tenant uh, buildings because that's a difficult such lessons have been learned for yep. example uh, back to king's cross mm -hmm. it was it was an underground but it still was a structure where you have different users and that yep. in that phase it had been uh, different line operators but simply the emergency protocols had not been synchronized no. and that lead to the fatalities so the question is is yeah. there anything in place other than uh, agreement between the tenants to do so yeah, if there's a multi-tenant building for offices um, every office and uh, we have a complex system of of permits and, uh, and uh, usage every office uh, having more than 50 uh, people at one time present in their uh, offices does have to have uh, not really a permit but does have to have an organization in place to prove that it's fire safe but if i have 50 users on every floor um, there is not a formal organization in place that they have to discuss with each other how they are going to do it um, if we look at it we, we say well if you want 60 people on your floor and we look at evac evacuation we are going to assume that everybody has 60 people on their floor to ensure that your safety is guaranteed but um, and also obviously the the owners of the building they want to know what they can rent out so they say uh, so they come to us and they say well we have this building and we want to uh, have uh, a tenant who says I want to have 110 people on that floor can we do that and then we look into how can you do that do you have to restrict the number of users on other floors or uh, and do you have provide information systems or is it just impossible or is it easy but it's not that formally regulated in the Netherlands uh, sorry I'm gonna ask uh, David uh, David uh, how did uh, you in in the first there are one uh, user in first because oh. uh, it's it's a multi-tenant building, yeah. but uh, but the core is like for everybody, and otherwise. Uh, mm -hmm. But the regulation is uh, we didn't change anything, or you didn't change anything on. Uh, only the multi-tenant they had to follow the rules of the building. Yeah. That's uh, that's uh, all yeah. the idea. Yeah. So you you have one building permit, and every tenant has to fulfill the requirements that are in the building. But 
they might well be different from one to the other. Their own organization can be very different, yeah. Yep. But it's also a multi tenant uh, building from 21 years. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't ma matter. It doesn't design. matter, yeah. Yeah. But that that is. The only thing is that yeah. uh, when you have something like this, there are restrictions. And if you are a building owner, and you have already permit, and, and your building is built for something, then when you rent your building, uh, then then you have to, that is actually your part, let's say if you are a owner, then you say this is a restriction when you rent it. If you cannot, uh, uh, then, then you shouldn't rent it to the people that they are not fitting on that uh, regulation. Hmm. That's a, that's a I, I think this is the way that we are working on. Hmm. We're not going to make a different uh, the, the, the escape uh, of a concept of evacuation for different tenants. This is hmm. one, uh, one evacuation concept. And if somebody rent a building, they have to follow that re regulation. Hmm. Yeah. But if there is a phased evacuation concept, that we say, well, for instance, the floor with a fire, the two floors on top of that and one floor below that, have to evacuate, uh, and another tenant is seven floors above it, and he sees the fire, and he says, "I'm uh, my organization says everybody out straight away." We cannot obstruct that, mm. so you get mixed uh, concepts. <coughs> okay, we're going. Uh, by the way, this is not the wrong slide. Uh, you probably think, "What is this actually?" We hard. said always, uh, we think everybody can find the regulation and rules in the book and manuals. Uh, but what we like to discuss today with you is uh, new challenges, other challenges, very related to the high rise or maybe uh, fire engineering, but other challenges. And I'm going to show you here. Uh, think different and look from different angles. Today, we discuss about the usage and regulation. And what I wanna we want to say is that this is just a simple a regulation and the design says, we make it something like this, very nice. Safe. Everybody's safe. And uh, there are regulations, uh, how you build this, or what is this, what is that. And you are safe, and you can go like this and like that. This is a regulation. But as you see, the user experience is completely different. So we want to think different. We want to think and look from different angles. And what we want to say is like this. Uh, we can and we do design and fire safety for the people. But in the end, when the people want to use this, sometimes you have to leave this and make this path better because this is right now is not uh, you know when it's raining and it's slippy and uh, you can fall here so in instead that <coughs> you say the regulation says this so we have to think in basic to make it this better mm. and I'm going to show you one example this is a high-rise building in Rotterdam and a storage uh, is also a sprinkler co complete building is a uh, sprinkler and uh, there are a lot of uh, storage, like two by two, six feet by six feet. And because of uh, uh, sprinkler, there are just uh, one sprinkler uh, it's, uh, in the middle of the storage. But what happened is that regulation of a sprinkler says, because of the height, and they put nicely these things here, no, you sit here. no storage over the 170. Geen opslag hoger dan 1,70 meter. No stacking above this line. And this is because of the regulation of sprinkler. But in reality, I mean, I don't like this. I don't want to, if, if I have a storage like this, and by the way, if you go to the IKEA or whatever, you cannot find something like uh, 1 meter 70. Uh, if you, uh, you buy it 2 meters and you have to go, and, uh, and then it, let's say there are 400 uh, the, uh, living uh, uh, people who are living here, then it, it just, if even 20% of people, they don't listen to this, then complete idea of a 
fire safety without, it doesn't work here. So we discuss actually this with other people. The people have the other idea. Yeah. And then if you know already that the usage is not good for the usage, then you have to think completely in the beginning to make something that maybe is not regulation, but it's safe. The people using this, then you just don't make this and the people using that. So, uh, it's, it's difficult hmm. if you go one side back because it, it, the, the, the fire safety is uh, conf conforming uh, regulations and design. Yeah. But in, in the real fire, and that ha doesn't happen that much, if there is no user experience in the fire, hmm. there are two, le two less fires. So there is no user experience. But here, the user experiences yep. that you stack everything until <coughs> that <coughs> and the sprinkler doesn't work. Yeah, but I'm, I'm going to go in case of real fire. Yeah. And the evacuation <coughs> and the, the, the firefighter brigade is doing things and they want to do, but they're doing it the other way, not confirmed, because it has to be done differently. And But the user part isn't, the user experience isn't there because we have no not that many uh, incidents yeah. in high-rise. There are different kinds of user experience. What we want to uh, show here, and that's on the next picture as well, it's not just um, doing the firefighting or uh, fire safety issues in a way, but also we have provisions for fire safety. Mm -hmm. But people use the building in a different way, uh, which uh, short-circuits the provisions for fire safety. That's a good point. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's what we... Yeah, 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 absolutely. Y yeah. You don't do, you don't have to f uh, fight a lot of fires in high-rise buildings. No, no absolutely. You may expect they want, they want to go that yeah. way or they behave like that, but they don't. No. In real, real life, they're humans, uh, they go anywhere. Yeah, there's one thing we can be sure of. They do not what we uh, <laughs> expect they do. Yeah. But you can, uh, something like this, you I can... Uh, I you But you have to use also your common sense. I'm going to give you an example. A uh, couple of months ago, uh, the Ukrainian uh, refugee come, and then we have to go to some of the buildings and to do it very fast to make it sure that they're coming there and they're leaving. And one of those things was one uh, colleague says uh, from uh, fire department, we have to put a sign that no smoking. And then I said, you know what? These people leaving their country, their home, that is like, and they come here, and you, you just want to put a sign, no smoking? You know they are going to smoke. That, uh, that, that sign, it doesn't make that they don't uh, smoke. So if you want to do something that if they uh, smoke, that you have to prevent something, do that. But don't just put a sign and then hoping that uh, <laughs> nothing happened. Yeah. It's a, it's just a, a common sense. You know these people under pressure. You know this, and this is almost s same. You know that you have some two by two uh, storage, and we know already we how do we use uh, storage. Even I do. Uh, my if you go to my storage right now, then you want to oh, <laughs> is, it, is it really fireproof? <laughs> but then, if you know that, then then don't make something that people doesn't listen. Don't make a lot of money, put it here and on that, and then in the end, the half of people maybe listen, the other half doesn't listen. So make it something, maybe mm. not exact like it, uh, regulation, but something that the people use it. Yeah. yeah. 
because this was uh, they, they couldn't uh, make it, but in the end it's already too late because all these things was uh, in in a, in a beton yeah, uh, in or the concrete. In a concrete. So if they if they thought about this in beginning, we could have solution. But in the end, they were too late, and this is only solution that you put it on the regulation. You had a is it maybe possible that the history of such uh, of this uh, information for the user is maybe that there is a restriction in fire load to ensure that you have a certain dimension of streamer insulation, which results yep. in less cost than if there would be a bigger fire load in the storage. And this was the way around just to please someone and say, yeah, take care, there's not much fire load, so this is enough dimension, for example, because normally it starts from this side. Yep. Because what do you really do if someone does not comply? It's well, for, for this inst uh, instance, the risk is not that big because there are two by two storage uh, spaces, there are um, brickwork walls, which are easily fire re uh, retardant, uh, fire <coughs> rated, um, and uh, the corridors between the uh, storages are also entirely in concrete and uh, brick. So th the risk is not that big. Um, and the sprinkler in this area is based on um, uh, not on a low hazard, but on an ordinary hazard. So it's not a low hazard, so we don't really need um, a low fire load. And because it's well, it's one sprinkler head for four square meters, where it's designed for up to nine square meters, you get a relatively lot of water. But it's just that the, the guidelines say, when you have this type of sprinkler, don't have a storage above um, no, the sprinkler head should be at least 30 centimeters or 45 centimeters above the top of the storage. Yeah. But that is for a nine square meter area. Uh, so I, d d I don't think the risk is high, but... but it's, a, it's, a, it's a requirement from the guideline. Yeah, it, this yeah, is a requirement from the guideline, but yeah. the guideline is based on one sprinkler head on nine square meters. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the risk is for this instance not that big, but what Sid really want to put forward, and I totally agree, is we have to think in solutions that do not make this kind of red lines necessary. For example, if the if they uh, if we or they or whatever uh, uh, you have a door to the storage, nobody is storage on the on the front of the door. If you had here one sidebar sprinkler, yeah, then was done, and you had a sidebar two me two by two. No they problem. Never you never do something on the door. That it's impossible. So. Uh, you had a solution with that, mm -hmm. but the solution when everything is built, you cannot go back. So you have some small details you can better. Yeah. But we go to the next one. This is also nice. This is a door, uh, also a high-rise building. It comes here, and you have to go here. That is a uh, uh, one of the stairs. But the thing is that all this garbage container they put it here, and it's also an uh, expedition area. Sometimes there are uh, here uh, two or three cars uh, here, and here is the completely done. But uh, but in when somebody built this on paper is good, but on paper this thing doesn't uh, <laughs> stand here. Yeah. But the people use it. It is very easy. You put it here because the car can go out. But they don't think about this is a yeah. very important uh, escape yeah. uh, area. So uh, in, an, in, in, uh, in the other uh, presentation, someone told us, uh, yeah, maybe they had to put it here a little bit higher, that they cannot put this here. You can do a lot of things, but you have to do it in beginning. This uh, small things, I mean, on the, on the drawing table or in uh, designing uh, the fire engineering, Nobody think about these things, but when the user come and they put these things here, well, all this money, all this thinking uh, we thought about the fire engineering, it <laughs> goes like like this gone. So, uh, and they have also because the Mark said, and the thing is, is information is also two side. When the people coming and living here, they had to know this is the, the this is this. Yeah so they don't have to use it. But somehow, this is very easy to put it here. I don't know. 
Yeah. Yep. This is your Yeah. This is um, also something we see in high rise. It can take some time before people are evacuated. And um, if the fire brigade is quick, and they in general are in the Netherlands, they can be there before everybody's evacuated. And then they are going to use the stairwell to connect their hoses, uh, to go up to one or two floors, because they connect their hoses one floor below where the fire is. And then they obstruct the evacuation route. They maybe short-circuit some provisions. Um, so we thought, well, basically, for repression, do not use the stairs, but the elevator. I don't know if, if something someone says, good idea or not a good idea. Repression. But do at not least use we have stairs. to think, start to think yeah. differently. Yeah. Because this is, uh, this is this definitely this is not good. Or should we have two evacuation routes and a repression route? Another stairwell. In yeah. Stay to the, the, the one or two floors below because there is no uh, hoses uh, connection in the in the elevator. If you say we want to do it like that, then you have to connect have to connect the uh, hoses in the elevator uh, in no, the in the lobby. Yeah, in the lobby, right? Because we don't connect them in the stairwell as well. We connect them in the lobbies of mm -hmm. the stairwell, and we can connect them in the lobby of the elevators. Of have we to do we have to do a separate lobby or? But you do, you do not want to mix those two groups, basically. But the thing is also here, you know, uh, yeah. you have a stairs, <coughs> and because of this, you connect everything, you know, the, your whole stairs that you are protected, is suddenly uh, there are with the open doors. Yeah. Has some problems. It doesn't work anymore. But that's because you are thinking traditional. Yeah. Buildings from buildings 10 meters and up. Yeah. And we use this because uh, fire protection uses us going upstairs, but we can't do this in a complex with 150 floor levels. No. no. The moment that fire brigade uses the stairs and is upstairs, we need a lot of time. The oxygen in their bubbles will be finished, mm -hmm. or I don't know. Yeah. And, and you can't use that as strategy. No, and no, and, and just also think if this. People coming from upstairs, and then you have this one. Uh, how this work? This. Yeah, you, you need to separate it. It has to have their own fire uh, lift. They need their own staircase, mm -hmm. and they need their evacuation committee. Yeah. 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 But you don't. And think about the difference because you can't you can't do 200 or 150 level of people evacuating in one time. No. Where will they stand when they yeah. go outside? You can't have like thousand people disperse in the city. <laughs> it's a completely yeah. different way of yeah, you looking have. at yeah. these yeah. things. Yeah. The absolutely. That's that's the point we I try to bring across. The, uh, first statement: repression by uh, uh, by the elevator. That's why maybe you shouldn't connect two or one floor below, but you connect at the same floor. That means, as a fire department, you don't come to the stairs mm -hmm. and the people go down. But this yeah. is an idea. It's it's not uh, no, the rules or. But that's not yeah. the. So that's but that's not. Uh, yeah. But right now, is is normally is yeah, that. Yeah. 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 I think it's it's really. I I, I should look for the good words for that. <laughs> it it doesn't look it doesn't look smart to have fire hoses through all the stairs. No. This is the way. Uh, yeah. Of course, they uh, they if they can they put the fire hose on the same, but. Normally, this is a. So, so we make connection points in the lobby. Yeah, and then and they still. And, and I still we go. Then they go the from the lobby into the stairwell. And the door is open uh, by. Uh, by well, but yeah. this is this is much worse. But. <laughs> yeah. 
Maybe. Yeah. 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 Or, or at least when you have a high rise, they have said when you go to the high rise, you have to do this. Yeah. And No, we're still thinking about there's a fire, there's an alarm in the whole building, everyone starts yeah. evacuating. No, five minutes. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. then you have another strategy because mm -hmm. you're only giving a signal to the people that have to evacuate, not the whole building. But it's different. Yeah, yeah. I understand, but uh, my uh, uh, point is uh, how, how can you be sure if everybody stays in the building? Because even if I don't have a fire alarm, if I have a fire with a lot of smoke, Some people leave the building. Yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. health, yeah. maybe yeah. health. Well, that's the point. Or, or, or one third, or yeah. two thirds, or nobody. You, you don't know. know. You don't know. That's the difference. Yeah. And especially with uh, sorry, yeah. and especially with residential. If you have an office, yeah. then you have a behalf and yeah. they say uh, you yeah. go, you uh, and you, you yeah. guide. You have the guidance, but if you are the residential, you don't know. If it's, if it's you have no idea. Dark, people stay in. Yeah. No, that's you true. Don't have so that. you, you, it's a different kind of yeah. evacuation. That's because in these offices, the people on the level, are, it's a much higher yeah. level yeah. of people on there. So yeah. it's yeah. different. Yeah. 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 We just we just speed up a little. You had one question. You also have the concept of, of uh, refugee floors. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, no, good good question. Yeah. We are currently designing a building of 250 where Mark is involved with refugee floors. One how which how many floors do you need to, to say we should have this? Because that's also a floor you can't rent out and make money with. Yeah. yeah. It's a, it's an amenity uh, room. Uh, and we have two, uh, two rooms, uh, one at uh, 30, 40 meters and the other on 160, 170. That's the, uh, the the room where people uh, come together. Yeah, can assemble. Have the, the opportunity to go with the uh, evacuation elevator to go downstairs or both uh, stairs. Yeah, Th and that's a, a private. Uh, is that that's a dwelling or a commercial high rise? No, uh, residential. Residential. Uh, residential. Res residential. Yeah. Only residential. No yeah. offices. No. Uh, and no and almost no BHD nothing. Yeah. So meaning they either they do or they don't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Freedom of choice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, this is also nice to know it uh, just don't forget, if you have it, this is by the way uh, Empire Stairs, but it's just fun. Empire Stairs is almost 400 meters. But if we build the uh, 400 meters and then uh, we want to go to escape uh, stairwell, and someone started, just let's say one, p one person started from 400 uh, and goes down, it takes one and a half hour. Just under. And yeah. one and a half hour if you are really fit mm -hmm. and if you are not resting mm -hmm. and you are not dazzling or whatever. Yeah. It takes one and a half. It's, it's almost unbelievable, but it takes really yeah. if, if you go like normal. Maybe yeah. if you are faster, it's like you can go hour. fast, but normally it would take almost. But one believe hour. me, I, uh, I I took a couple of times uh, the high rise so building. Basically, or yeah. maybe hey, if we go uh, the stay in place concept gains relevance. But if you design for stay in place, if, if you want to have people to stay in place, it has to be safe enough to stay in place. Um, Using the elevators for evacuation gains relevance, and that's for the amenity floors where Mark discussed. From the amenity floors, you can use the elevator to evacuate. So they're separate from the firefighters' elevators, but they're evacuation elevators. And maybe also a safe harbor area if you, are, if you think, well, it if it's... Uh, okay, five yeah. yeah. Five more minutes, <laughs> and then the drinks are upstairs. Uh, so if you, if you say, well, 
I'm too tired, or if you have the feeling that you block people, I can imagine some people feel uncomfortable if they think other people want to go faster, there should be a space that you can step aside and you take a little rest and you can let the other people pass and then you can continue your route. But then you have to have requirements in place. So information for the fire services, but also for the occupants, not just about the building, but also about the calamity, that people can know the fire is on the 13th floor. The sprinkler has been activated. The fire is not growing anymore. The fire brigade is present already. They are dousing the fire. Um, maybe you have, if you use the elevator, where do you connect your hoses? You have to think about it. So new provisions to, um, to use the new solutions. And also what organization is required. If you have a multi-tenant building, you have to do something. If you have office buildings, you have to do something quite different than in residential buildings. But do you want some organization in a residential building? So we discovered, well, we, d we really have to do look thi do things in a different way. <coughs> I skipped this one. This, okay. is, uh, this is just uh, yeah. this is American football with a, with a quarterback. And then I say always the quarterback is like a court of the building and then lines of defense. So uh, they have the book, uh, you know, if you uh, watch American football, and they have the book, and then they say it's, it's, it's the scenarios. It goes there, and actually, we do it uh, with, the yeah. with the with the with the core of the building. The same thing. The core of the building is the most important part of the building because if you it have has to. Rise, yeah. Because uh, finally, the the the, the, the people uh, the the escape from this place, and the and the fire departments uh, do the things here. Mm -hmm. So it's. Uh, yeah. It's very important to make a line of defense very well. And, uh, and we have, colla I collated it here a bit more structural. We have, in high rise in the Netherlands, we have sprinkler in the entire building. These are uh, residential areas, so these are uh, apartments, uh, also separated with fire rated uh, partitions. But the core of the building demands specific attention. We say we have firefighter elevators, uh, regular elevators or evacuation elevators with their own lobby. We have two stairwells with both their own lobbies. And maybe here the lobbies are interconnected. Maybe you don't want that. Um, and this is already an evacuation route with a low fire load, still sprinklered. So this is the compartment. A fire can start here. It's very improbable that a fire would start here. Uh, the stairs, are these the stairs called scissor stairs or snack house? The yeah. vocal trappen, yeah. And that's, and that's still allowed? It's still yeah. allowed, but we come back to that. Okay. Yeah, we come back to that. So this is what we say. We have a sprinkler, we have fire rated partitions, which are also smoke resistant, because with sprinkler, the heat will not develop. So you don't know if your fire resistant partitions will also uh, function as smoke barriers. We have a low fire load in the entire core, firefighter lifts, Wet risers, but where? Because if the firefighters use these lifts and then they do not use the stairwells and the lobbies of the stairwells, then they have to find another position to connect their hoses. Some assertions, well, we discussed some already. Uh, every yeah. city needs the fires, no, uh, maybe nationally. Um, the sky is the limit, well, we can <laughs> discuss that. Uh, avoid stairs, we discussed, stay in place. For the design, stay in place should be the starting point, but then, because then you deliver the safety necessary to stay in place. And if you have the building on fire and you decide, well, I want everybody out or people do go out, it shouldn't be obstructed, but it should be safe enough if people stay in their apartments, no problem. Information on occupants. Um, we discussed if people are not self-reliant or can't use the stairwell, do you want to make that information available to the fire brigade or to the building uh, uh, owner so that they know there's a fire on floor 72, I have two inhabitants there who cannot use the stairs, they have to use the elevator for evacuation. So to start with, the elevator goes to that evacuation to take away those people. And maybe the stairwells, maybe you have to split them, you cannot make the Wokkel Trappenhuis anymore. You have, we don't know, we, for now we still allow it, but maybe if you go really high, you cannot do it anymore. And then 
information, information, information. For the users, knowing the building, knowing the calamity, but also for the fire brigade, if they approach the building, they know this building is 300 meters tall, it has sprinkler, uh, people can stay in place if they want to, um, I can use those elevators, I have to connect my hoses near the elevators, I should not use the stairs, and use a digital environment for that. In and that's what we, and also the command room we mentioned earlier, that can be a, a virtual command room. In memory of all those who lost their life in fire. Thank you very much. Thank you for participating in this conversation.